name is Chris Howe with Open EVSE. We specialize in fully open electric vehicle charging solutions. Today we are going to talk about the Advanced Series Kit. We've made a lot of improvements in the kit over the last couple of years. It is easier to build now than ever. Before we get started, please subscribe and leave us comments below on this video and what you'd like to see in future videos. Let's get started. First thing we'll do is head over to guides.openevse.com. Head down to the charging station category and open the guide for the advanced series kit. Uh, the first step is a couple of drawings that are very handy. So you might want to either print them out or, or download them and keep them in a good place uh, to reference. And we'll start in step two, we'll start the mounting plate. So we'll position the screws in the upper hole. These screws need to be extra tight. For a little extra, you can add some thread locker to it as well to make sure that the screws don't come loose. So we'll put all four screws in with the hex standoff for the board. Add a little bit of thread locker. And the last one. We'll flip it over and use a screwdriver just to make sure they're nice and tight. Position it over the holes and we'll use a self-tapping screw find the right hole and we'll do the hot top one as well Now that the relay is secure, we will mount the ground block. We'll face the ground block with the lugs towards the left hand side. We'll use a quarter inch self tapping screw. That's it for the mounting plate. Next we're going to attach the relay wire to drive the relay coil and we'll uh, put the mounting plate into the enclosure. So it's just a little bit easier to, to work with while it's outside of the enclosure. 
So we'll go ahead and put the relay wire on. The black wire will go down to the bottom hole. And we'll kind of angle this off to the right hand side. So it'll be easy to lay down along the bottom side. Red wire we'll put up top. And we'll also angle that to the right hand side. bring the enclosure and using coarse threaded screws we'll put a couple in the top a couple in the middle and then a couple down at the bottom two in the middle. Now we'll go ahead and install the cable glands. ready to move on to the next step. Now we'll put the EV cable through the right side gland. And for now, we'll just kind of pull these the red and the black wire out of the way. We'll put the pilot wire, the purple wire down low. And then we'll connect the ground wire, the green wire, to the block. We'll put this one down in the bottom slot to keep it away from the relay coil wire. And we'll secure it. The ground block may move around a little bit, but that's okay. We'll, we'll secure it down after we put the input cord wire on it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Next, we'll bring in our coils. 
And the first one that will go on is the GFCI safety coil. We're going to put that over both the black and the red wires. And then we're going to lay this wire down low in the enclosure with the other wires. Next, we'll put on the current measurement coil. This is going to go on just one wire, and we'll put that on the black wire and move the red wire over to the side. Now that all the wires are together, it's not a bad idea to put a couple of tie wraps on there just to keep them all bunched up neatly and away from the other wires. If the wires don't touch each other, uh, there's no way that you can have any sort of short circuit uh, if the power wires were ever to have an issue. So keep the low voltage wires bundled and low in the enclosure and it'll keep them out of the way. So now we can actually start connecting the power wires and we're going to connect the harness at the same time we connect the power wires. The red wire is going to go up top and then we'll use the shorter of the two for the, the AC test wires. These provide safety checks for the relay so that we know that the relay is closed when it should be closed. And then we'll angle this right to the right hand side. So we kind of want this red wire to be in the middle of the enclosure, the other wires to be down at the bottom, and then for the black wire we will loop it around and point it upward and then we'll use the longer of the two safety wires for that one. So we'll get the screw. I'll point this kind of down and to the left so we keep it out of the way of the red wire. And we'll kind of angle that one up towards the top of the enclosure. All right, we want these to be pretty snug. We don't want the wire to be able to move at all. All right, so that'll do it for mounting the EV wire. So now we're gonna put in the input cable. It's very similar to the EV cable. We're gonna put the cable in. We'll get the red and the black wire out of our way so we can take care of the ground wire down below first. Then we'll move on to the red wire. We'll match it with the red wire on the harness.
down onto the relay. And we'll send this out to the left. Now we want to make sure we pull the cable in enough to clear the mechanism down on the side. If there's anything in the way, the relay won't operate correctly. So we want to make sure that there's plenty of space in here. And we'll kind of send these wires down towards the bottom so they stay out of the way. Next we'll do the black wire. I'm going to flip this one in the opposite direction I did the red wire so that we keep these wires up towards the top of the enclosure. Again, like I said before, if wires don't touch, then they can't cause any sort of problems with one another. And so now we'll send those wires kind of up high and make the red ones go down low. Now we can go ahead and tighten the cable glands for both our EV and input cables. To tighten down the glands, we'll just use a set of channel locks. And we want to tighten these down to the point where we can no longer pull the cable out. So now it's pretty tight. We'll go ahead and give that a nice pull. And we'll do the same for the input cable. Now we're going to start installing the electronics. One note is the electronic devices are static sensitive, so you want to try to lift them by the board edges or by the power supply. Try not to touch the components on the board. So to start, we are going to place our electronics on a static safe device. Uh, you can use the pink baggie that the device was wrapped in. And we're going to install the power supply for Wi-Fi while it's out of the enclosure. It's a bit easier to, to do these screw connections when the board is not installed. The red wire will go on top for positive 12 volts, and the ground black wire will go in the bottom. Tighten the screws. And now we're ready to install this in the enclosure. Now we'll install the controller in the enclosure. First we'll connect the pilot wire while we can still maneuver the board and see the connection point really well. We'll tighten that up. Alright, it's nice and secure and now we'll go ahead and mount it on the mounting post. get each of the four screws started and then we'll tighten them all down just to make sure we can get each of the screws into the holes easily. Now that all four screws are in, we'll tighten them down.
once the board is secure, now we can start plugging in the connectors. All the connectors are polarized, so there's no worry. Uh, they'll only plug into one, they'll only plug in in one direction. Now this Wi-Fi connector with two wires on it, the green wire is going to go toward the board edge. So we'll connect that down on the six pin connector, just like that, and we can tuck the Wi-Fi power supply down for now. Next we will install the Wi-Fi controller. So we'll peel the automotive gray double stick tape. And place it in the enclosure just below the top lip. Press it down and then we'll connect the Wi-Fi power supply with the black ground wire on top. Now we'll install the display cable. The black wire is going to go towards the board edge. Now the main charging station is complete. We're going to move on to the enclosure lid. So we want to make sure we peel the protective coating off the display and hold the display by the board edges because it is a static sensitive device. The pins across the top are going to go on the cutout for the top and then we'll screw the display in. So get each screw started and then we'll tighten them all the way down. may take a little bit of pressure to get them started. Now if you do want to keep time and timers and keep the settings for time while the power is gone, you can install a CR1200 series battery here. In addition, you can install an optional touch button under the icon, the menu icon. We don't recommend installing a button for most users uh, because all the settings are available via Wi-Fi. And if you have an outdoor station, you might not want a, a button where anybody walking up could touch it. But if you do want a button, uh, it, an optional touch button can be installed right here. Now we'll install the lid on top of the enclosure. Connect the display wire to the display and make sure all the wires are out of the way and not running under the edges of the enclosure. Now we'll tighten the six screws.
we're done. We're ready to plug this station in, test it out, and set up the Wi-Fi. Thanks for watching.